Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's part two of my playthrough of Panzer, the game of small unit actions and combined arms operations on the Eastern Front, 1943-44, to 44, designed by James M. Day and published by GMT Games. In the last video we saw both the Germans and the Soviets vying for the best positions and there was some AP fire from both sides but as you may have noticed in the video a few little daft mistakes and from the comments a couple of things I need to put right so let's do that first this stack here moved far too much they couldn't get in to those shell holes so I've moved them back there and also the spotting ranges for units in wood building hexes it would appear that it's to do with general purpose fire according to here so unless i'm told otherwise we'll keep the spotting modifier as light so instead of coming down three we're going to make it just the one unless i'm told otherwise I wasn't doing the AP range quite right when I was counting the hexes and looking it up on the data card for the range to see what the penetration was. That wasn't quite right because that R value has to be greater than or equal to the range in hexes. So for instance, 13, I think I was using, because I'm still using that because it's between these two. No, it has to go up to the next highest range gunnery range so hopefully i'll be doing that correctly i also had a question concerning the stacks of counters that you can get in this game but you can use this track here and these counters so you can take stuff off the map and tidy it up and put them here and this is the orientation down here we've got this little A, and number one is pointing straight up. So that's the orientation of the stuff in the hex. And you can replace it with one of those to keep it tidy. I can't do that because uh, it's awkward for videoing purposes. But you can certainly use those counters to keep the map a bit tidier. I also moved this one too far. I went a bit bonkers and used its path movement allowance. So what I've done is to rewind that unit's movement from the beginning. And I said I've placed it here instead of here. So one, two, three, four. That's now a legal move. And lastly, the unit whose turret was damaged in the last video has to do a bailout check. We are using that rule. And I thought it was just if a tank got a no damage result. But no, looking at the rules, of course. For the crew, if a target receives a no damage, damage or track hit result, its crew may decide to abandon the vehicle. So we'll do that before we start. Just the one tank and it's this table here, the bailout table of course, damaged or track for the crew, 30% or less. So, if you remember from last time, the coloured die is the tens and the white die the units. We're looking for 30 or less to have the crew of that tank bail out. No, 88, they're fine. So, here we go with turn three. And the first thing, of course, is the spotting phase. So, we'll work from the bottom to the top. The Germans and the Soviets here. There is line of sight. It misses those woods. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's a default 20 hex range for vehicles. The Soviets fired, so that will go up three or up to the top here. So they're well within the spotting range. The Germans are in light cover, so it comes down one, but they fired as well, so 
they're both within spotting ranges. What about this one? No, that clips the woods there. These get in the way, but you can see that one on the hill. So we'll leave that marker on it. These can't see anything because they're behind the hill. This one can't see that, of course, because of the hills, but there is line of sight for those Germans in the woods, but can they see them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, they fired. So they're up here and they're in light cover. So yes, 30 hexes they can be seen. So to summarize, these can see these, those can see each other. These can't see each other, but those two can, as can those two. Right, I think that's it. I hope I've done it right. That's the spotting phase. Next, it's the command phase. So available commands. Both sides have their units in command range of their HQ. Yes, this was nine hexes away, as was this one. And just like before, as there haven't been any tanks destroyed yet, they both get their six commands. Who's going to place them first? And this will, of course, give advantage to the other side. Lowest die has to do it. The Russians have to place their commands first. So what are they doing? Well, to be fair, this is a bit too far away. What did we say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And twelve will knock them up to the long range with only a thirteen penetration. Not good. They need to get closer. So we'll probably put a move command for that stack. Because remember, we have a damaged tank here with its turret, which will. Give it a minus three. So they've got to get as close as possible. Uh, thing is, I think we'll try and move them round into the scrub here or even through the woods to try and get a bit closer, A, to this VP marker and also a bit closer to the Germans. So a move marker for them. The command tank for the Soviets is quite happy where it is. So we'll leave it there for the time being. This platoon here is a bit far away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve again. That's 13 penetration. What they're going to try and do is move down, maybe get on top of this hill. No, they'll be in sight of these if they do, but I think they have to. And as I say, my tactics might not be yours and you will play this game completely different. So move for those. Now these at the top here in the woods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So yes, still on the long range. They've got to move out, I think. We could for those, do a short halt. At least they can have a go at firing at the Soviets on the hill there, and then move a couple of hexes nearer. Very dangerous. But the Germans have the advantage by just staying where they are. Okay. Germans. Well, I think they're going to fire at these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I think with 18 penetration, I think they'll do a short halt because they're going to fire and then maybe move a little bit closer to those tanks there because both sides are going to get going and uh, try and capture these victory points. 
I think the German command tank will want to move and try and get here. So it's still in cover, but it's moving up in case it's tanks advance and it can keep in command range of them. So a move for that one. So those on the hill at the top there are going to fire the Soviets over here. And these, I think it needs to get a little bit closer. So we'll do a short halt so it can fire and then move in and snuggle up against that hill. So it will be a bit closer and hidden from these for the time being. So we'll try that. That I think is it. That is the command phase. We're now into the third phase, the initiative phase. So both sides really want to get the initiative. So risky business for the Soviets and it could be a turkey shoot for the Germans. Let's see who goes first. 76 for the Soviets. 79 for the Germans. The Germans squeak in and they have the initiative for turn three. So the Germans will be the first player, so they'll fire first and move second. So Let's have a look at this one. Let's get in a bit closer. So the Soviets here are firing. We've got three tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're firing uphill. Look at that. Dead on the 12, 18 penetration, they're at medium range. Unfortunately though, we're here at 50%, but the target is moving. This is what I got wrong last time. This only applies if the target has a move command on it, which of course it does. It's nothing to do with the yellow spot markers. So that's a minus two. So we're down to 40%. Anything else? It isn't in cover. Not damaged, not suppressed. I think that might be it. Now, let's have a look at this. In the advanced game, we can use different ammo. We've got this APCR ammo here. And at 12, it will be here, will give us an extra point of penetration. But we've got a little A there and up here. That means we've got to throw a four or less. If we don't, we can't use that ammo. We have to revert back to the normal armor piercing ammo, but it will be at a minus three. So for the extra penetration point, I don't think that's worth it. So. What did we say? 40%. We've got three tanks on the Soviet side, so we'll have top tank fire at the top tank, middle tank at the middle Soviet tank, and the bottom tank at the bottom Soviet tank. 40%. Right. So we can get that in there. Top tank. 52. No. Middle tank. Oh, 50, come on. Oops. Forty-eight, no. The Germans have missed. Terrible shooting by the Germans. That stays on the fire spot. Next. This one shooting at the tank just off screen there. There we are. So firing at this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That again is medium 
range for 18. Again, not much point in doing the other for the extra penetration point. So here we are, 50% again, but no target size as before. Target is moving because it's got a, a move command. So that's a minus two, but the shooter is also using short halt, which is minus four. One, two, three, four, five, twenty percent. I don't like those odds. Two German tanks firing at three, so we'll have the top one to the top one, bottom one to the middle one. Twenty percent. Oh, ho, 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 20. No, you can't say it. 24. Just missed. And the bottom tank. 65. No, that's no good. Oops, can't see that. That's no good at all. They miss. So that's going to move round. That's fired. That moves around to the move. I think some people put them on the side there. I'm just gonna leave it there. So next is this little tank section here, firing all the way into those woods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is making it long, 16 penetration. I don't hold up much hope for this because target size doesn't matter, but the target is moving because they've got this short halt. They're in light cover, so that's minus one, so it's minus three. And they are firing, are the Germans, with a short halt, so that's minus four, that's down to minus seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. But they might as well, because they can creep forward a bit after this. So there's two tanks in that little stack. The top one at the top, Soviet. The bottom one at the middle. 75, no. 77. No. Well, we didn't think that was going to do much good anyway. So just move that out of the way for a minute while we adjust that. Then it's this platoon which can fire, looking at it, either at that stack or that stack. So let's see what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Whoa, hold on. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Let's have a look on here. Twelve will give us eighteen. 13 will move us up to long range. I think that answers our question. We're going after these. Three tanks against three tanks. Top against the top, middle, middle, bottom, bottom. So let's see what the percentage is. We're at medium range. So that's 50%. The target is going to move, so it comes down two we're down to 40 but i think that might be it they're not doing a short halt this time they're firing that's it and again the ammo limit using this it would move up to here so not much in it so just the minus two for moving 40 percent let's see how they do 83, middle tank, 74, 
42 just misses. I tell you what, the shooting by the Germans in this turn is atrocious. Excuse me, we'll just move that. And these have fired. There we go. So that's the Germans combat phase over. So let's have a look what the Soviets are going to be doing. The only one that's going to be firing is this platoon over here with the short halt. So let's see how they get on. So these tanks here will be firing at those on the hill. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Unfortunately, that will bring it to long range with 13 penetration. So what percentage are we going to get? We are here at 30%. I don't think there's anything apart from short halt, minus four. So one, two, three, four. We're at 18%. Doesn't look good. Let's try and bring that in there. So three tanks here against three tanks. We'll do our usual top Soviet tank against the top German tank. Middle for middle and bottom tank for bottom tank. 18%. So who go with the top Soviet tank? Oh, they've only gone and done it, look. 15%. The top tank has hit the German top tank. Where are they hitting them? Good grief. That is hitting the front of the tank. So where are they hitting? Can't believe it. 10. That's, yeah, that's a track hit. Front track. That has immobilized the tank, and it will get one of those. It won't receive any further damage, but uh, that's not going anywhere. And the other thing is, that tank now has to check to see if the crew will bail out. Here we are, bail out. Damaged track for the crew. 30% or less. Pop that back. It's all going a bit pear-shaped for the Germans. 30% or less. 22, they bail out. I don't believe it. I get one of them. So let's move this out the way. The top tank now has its crew leap out and melt into the surrounding countryside. That tank isn't removed from the map. It doesn't count as victory points for the Soviets, but to all intents and purposes, that's one tank down on that hill. I suppose to get the victory points, the Soviets will have to destroy the tank either with a, a knockout or a brew up. But for now, I can hear the cheering from here. What a shot. Middle tank. Surely not. No, 59. Bottom tank. <laughs> Five. They've only gone and done it again. Where have they hit this time? Dear, oh dear. You couldn't make this up. Oh, one, they've hit with a one. And one is on the front turret front. So the Russians have got 13 penetration. It's a rising shot. They're firing uphill and Look at that, 12, they've penetrated, but the Germans 
have one hope left. If the Russians roll badly on that variable AP penetration table, let's see what they get. Three and a nine. Three, we're down here, we're at 13, aren't we? Three is minus one, but a nine is plus two, so that is a plus one. It's made it worse. That becomes 14, 12. It's penetrated. Now we just see what damage is done to that poor German tank. It's only a 10. Dear, oh dear. It's a brew up. Oh, excuse fingers. I'm going to take this bottom tank away. That will count for the Soviets' victory points. Let me pop that there. So let's make sure we've got everything. So this tank is okay. This has a track that's damaged and the crew have bailed out. So that brewed up tank will now give off a column of smoke, which won't impede line of sight, but will be a hit modifier. So to remind us, I've got these cute little things. I think I saw Dad versus Son use them. I thought I'll have some of those. So there we are. My goodness, what a turn up for the books. They finished. So we'll turn that round. I think that's it. That's the end of the combat phase. We're now into the movement phase and the Soviets will go first. But before we do the movement, I forgot we have to adjust the German cohesion point total. So we're going to put a little one there to remind us they've lost one off their seven. Something else I forgot to do before we move into the movement phase is that when a tank brews up, all other vehicles in that hex will get suppressed. There's one tank left in that hex that has a crew and they will get one of those, a suppress on. So let's show you what's in here because I think my hand was covering it last time. So we've got our brewed up tank there. We've got our bailed out tank here, which has damaged tracks. And here's the only tank that's working. And that gets that suppress on there. And the fire spot on top. There we are. And now it's time for the movement phase and the Soviets are going first. So starting here, this stack is coming out of the woods. So you may remember they have to roll to see if they bog down. If they do, they can't move. So they're in light woods. So a quick check on here means, and that's the bogging down one. Yes, that's the hull down next to it. So 20% or less, they will bog down. So top tank, 58, no, they're okay. Middle tank, 69, they're fine. And the last tank, 56. No, they're all okay. So they can move. They have a movement allowance of five. So that's halved and rounded down. So they can move two hexes. 
Do you know what? They might as well move along here. Uh, one, two. And they have moved and finished their short halt. We'll change that over. These are moving, we said, to try and get on top of this hill. They're coming down from a level two hill. So that's two, three, four, five. I think they can just make it with their five movement points. They have moved. Nothing happening with our command tank for the Soviets. And lastly, we have this stack here. They're coming down from a hill. So that will be one, two. Just thinking three. That's scrub. That takes two to get into that. So they're moving into that. Hold on though. If they turn, no, they don't have any bogging down in scrub. So that's all right. They can turn because you have to check if you turn as well. Let me just check that was all right. One, two, three, four, five. And they have moved. That's it for the Soviets. Let's just quickly move the Germans. Short halt orders for the Germans means they've only got a two movement allowance. So these, as I say, are just going to move forward. It's looking a bit dodgy for the Germans. So he's going to go one, two, and then turn. So that's him done. The command tank here is going to be one to come down the slope, one into the clear. So that's one, two, three, four. And lastly, this platoon here. Just going to turn one, two. I think that's it. Now it's the adjustment phase. So here's what we're doing in the adjustment phase. Pivot step is for leg and toad units. We're not using turrets. Uh, adjust full cover step again that's for leg units but this one adjust remove suppressions step that step only applies if our suppression counter was on its off side but it isn't it's still on so right at the end we have this adjust remove counters step and for this stack here it means that the suppression on becomes a suppression off and next turn we can try and remove that because suppressions as you can imagine have adverse effects and we'll probably see those in the next turn but for now we can turn that to off excuse me There we are. That is the end of the turn, I think. Crikey, I thought uh, nothing was going to happen, but look at the Soviets. They rallied right at the last minute and on a short halt. So the uh, turret was wobbling about as it was moving and still took out two tanks. Good grief. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I hope I'm playing it uh, better now. 
There may still be some little daft mistakes I'm making. If so, again, let me know because it's of great help to myself and to others. And thanks for those pointers from the last video. If you did enjoy it and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help. Pushing the like button of the video helps as well. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push that bell. Leave a comment. Apart from the daft mistakes, what do you think? I think it's a cracking game. Complex, but as crunchy as you want to make it, you can add and subtract these advanced and optional rules. But let me know. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you so much. And just before I go, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee. And those coffees go towards helping to maintain the channel and also enabling it to continue to upload new content. If you wish to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description and thank you. So, what will happen next time? The Germans have been given a bloody nose. Will they come back with a vengeance? Or will the Soviets continue to push that little advantage they've got? Well, you'll have to tune in next time to find out. So until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.